I've invited you to the studio because you're representing North Cyprus. No one accepts the term North Cyprus. Everyone says when we're talking about Cyprus, it's the Greek Cypriot side which is representing Cyprus. Mm -hmm. But Cyprus was taken into the uh, European Union as the whole island, mm -hmm. including you. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Obviously not very uh, positively. Um, years ago when I was serving as a career diplomat and uh, was on my tour in London, a British journalist friend taught me a saying, which I think uh, reflects uh, the position of the Turkish Cypriot people. And the saying went like this, the other day upon the stair, I saw a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I wonder when he'll go away. Now that's us. We're there, but then we're not. Uh, we're not there. We don't. We exist, but presumably, we don't exist, or we're not supposed to exist. But we're there. We we exist. Um, the Greek Cypriots. Uh, unfortunately, have been given the opportunity to present themselves as Cyprus on their own. Uh, this is not their uh, making. This is not a success on the part of the Greek Cypriots. This is what the international community, mainly the United Kingdom to begin with, knowingly gave them this opportunity. Uh, you may recall that uh, the 1960 Republic survived for only three years. And in 1963, December 1963, the partnership broke down. Uh, partnership of Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots as co-founder partners of the 60 Republic of Cyprus. And uh, the Greek Cypriots staged uh, attacks on the Turkish Cypriots and kicked the Turkish Cypriot partner out. In March 1964, the UN Security Council passed a resolution to send uh, UN troops to island to the island because Which the Turkey in April 64. 50 years ago. Yes. Now, in that resolution, uh, there is reference to the Republic of Cyprus and to the government of Cyprus, when in fact, the constitutionality of the Republic of Cyprus was no longer there because the partnership no longer existed. And uh, the government of Cyprus legitimately ceased to exist because the Turkish Cypriot partner has, was kicked out. But the UN Security Council nevertheless passed this resolution to send UN troops to the island, presumably to stop the bloodshed, to stop Turkish Cypriots from being killed by Greek Cypriots. Ever since that resolution, the Greek Cypriots have had the opportunity to say, you see, the Republic of Cyprus legitimately exists, the government of Cyprus legitimately exists, uh, because the UN Security Council resolution says so. And since then, they have had the opportunity to say, we are the Republic of Cyprus. And that's what the international society has accepted. Knowingly. It, to me, it's never been... Um, obvious why the people, the Turk Cypriot people in northern Cyprus have been punished because they didn't um, make a uh, situation in 74 which uh, was absolutely against the uh, Zurich-London agreements mm -hmm. of 60 as you mentioned <clears throat> mm -hmm. and they um, they didn't um, had any chance to to protest or to do anything um, when Nico Samson was announced uh, president and seeking enosis, the, uh, the, um, the annexation of the annexation to, of Greece. Land, to Greece. Yes. So, how have you been able to survive all these years as a nation without any recognition from outside? Well, um, what happened in Cyprus in 1974 the coup d'etat against uh, Makarios' government 
and the uh, him being replaced by a gangster called Nikos Samson. That wasn't the only thing that went against the London and Zurich agreements that created the Republic of Cyprus of 60. What happened in December 63 was against the London and Zurich but agreements. I just tried to step yes. forward. Yes. Now, I was 10 years old in 1963, and I remember the fighting, the bombs, the sound of gunfire and everything, the refugees. In fact, two families who we didn't know at all, two families came and sought refuge in our own house, which was in the Turkish sector of Nicosia. Um, how we survived? Obviously, with many, many difficulties. Um, we survived because we kept on, uh, we hung on to our Turkish identity. Uh, because I, I thereby totally dependent on, on the help from Turkey, correct? Totally dependent on the help from Turkey. Uh, our salaries were sent by Turkey. Um, Water was sent by everything. From Turkey. We de we totally depended on the help of uh, Turkey. From 63 till 74 were what we call the tragic years for Turkish Cypriots. Uh, hundreds of Turkish Cypriots were buried in mass graves. Uh, there are, uh, but there were massacres on both sides. Sure. But let's try to find out in which way from that point on um, the efforts by the international society have been taken. What has UN done? What has EU done? What has even perhaps NATO done? Well, uh, as I mentioned earlier, UN troops came to the island in 1964. Um, and they are still there and nothing has happened? They are still there. They are still there. And uh, one uh, side point I should add here, when you talk to a Greek Cypriot, uh, and you refer to the Cyprus problem, or he or she refers to the Cyprus problem. For them, the problem began in 1974. Uh, and for them, the definition of the Cyprus problem is uh, invasion and occupation of Cyprus by Turkey. As if nothing happened before 1974. They forget that they created 1974. They forget the treatment that they... Uh, uh, gave to the Turkish Cypriots from 63 till 74. Um, the 63 till 74 period is the period that we, yes, managed to survive in spite of all the difficulties, but the main reason why the Greek Cypriots did not succeed to do what they really wanted to do, was the, uh, their uh, being afraid of uh, Turkey. That if they went beyond a certain uh, line, uh, Turkey would intervene. Being only 80 kilometers away. away. And everyone forgets, to this very day, everyone forgets that the 60 Republic of Cyprus was not a fully uh, sovereign state that was created. The Republic of Cyprus, at its establishment, had three guarantor country, countries. Great Britain, Greece and Turkey. Great Britain, Greece and Turkey. Now, uh, in case the state of affairs created by the London and Zurich agreements and the Republic of Cyprus of 60, in case this state of affairs was threatened or changed, uh, the, th the guarantor powers had the right to intervene. And that's exactly what happened in 74. Exactly. And Great Britain didn't do anything. No. Greece waited for Nicholas Samson. Um, no, Greece installed Nicholas Samson. But the junta uh, yes. installed, yes. The, the outcome of today, where um, you said yes to the so-called Anand um, plan, um, and the Greek Cypriots said no, mm -hmm. The Greek Cypriot government, as the international recognized government, entered the European Union, but again with the whole island, mm -hmm. established, to me at least, a very, very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. Because inside this island, you live, 
with more than 250,000 Turkish Cypriots, mm-hmm. or even more. But it can be discussed how many of them are real um, Turkish Cypriots, how many are Turks, but that's another story. But it has not been accepted that you speak a language which is not the official language in the Greek Cypriot um, government's opinion. Mm-hmm. How do you react to that? How do you accept that this is even in this house? We don't accept it. We don't accept it. Uh, our position here in this house is something that we don't accept. But uh, you have to live with the realities, no matter how unfair they may be. Now, um, the Greek Cypriots being accepted to the European Union is is something that no one can explain with logic. As you know... Oh, the, yes, with uh, Greek pressure inside. Okay. Now, then no one in the European Union should talk to anyone about Copenhagen criteria. Uh, the applicant country, presumably so-called Cyprus, is a country that does not fall in line with the Copenhagen criteria. Not only does it not have zero problems with its neighbors, but there is a border going through the country, and there have been United Nations soldiers on the island to this very day since 1964. There is an ongoing conflict between the Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots. Yeah, what I, uh, what I referred to was the fact that your rights being a minority, we are not a with minority. the Council of, with the Council of Europe defending, as well as the right of minorities languages, has not done anything else but giving you a guest status within this organization. Mm-hmm. You are a minority on the island as such. We may be numerically less than the Greek Cypriots, but the Republic of Cyprus, a minority Republic of is Cyprus. About. The Republic of Cyprus, when it was established in 1960, was established between two political equals. Uh, The minorities of the Republic were identified as Latins, Armenians, and Maronites. But the Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots were co-founder partners as political equals. So, By by stating what you're saying now, you are actually um, giving... um, a legal aspect which is not relevant in the daily life of Turk Cypriots. They shall be accepted as human beings, my point of view. Yes, that's what I meant. Uh, the treatment that we have been getting from the international community, let alone the Greek Cypriot side, uh, is something that we don't accept, we don't digest, but it's something that we have to live with until such time, hopefully, when it will change. And like in the Council of Europe, we are here. We come at every session. Uh, There is uh, my colleague who represents the ruling party, and I represent the main opposition. Uh, We are classified here as elected representatives of the Turkish Cypriot community. We can attend the General Assembly, we can attend the committees, uh, we can speech, uh, speak there, but we don't have the right to vote. The Greek Cypriots do. Uh, this is not something that uh, we enjoy, but obviously it's better than not being here at all. Uh, we were not here t- until 2004. It is since 2004 that we have been uh, represented here, partially represented here, with, without the right to vote. Now, I represented President, late President Denktash in Copenhagen in December 2002. At uh, the summit where no. the... No, not no, at no, no. No, okay. the summit. The <clears throat> EU summit was taking place in Copenhagen, yep. but during the same uh, days, the same time, uh, there were negotiations that we and the Greek Cypriots conducted with uh, Alvaro de Soto, UN Secretary General Kofi Annan's representative on Cyprus. Um, same dates. Because President Tenktash uh, had health problems, I went to Copenhagen as the foreign minister. Um, 
on the third day of our negotiations. And the next day, on the fourth day, uh, the uh, final communique of the EU summit was to be announced. De Soto put in front of me uh, two pages. One, if I were to sign the Annan plan, the Cyprus paragraph of the final communique. The other, if I didn't sign the Annan plan, the Cyprus paragraph of the final communique. I read the two, and I turned to De Soto and said, whether I sign it or not, it makes no difference, because in either case, you have taken in the 1960 Republic as a member of the European Union. I said, I have three conditions. If these conditions are to be included in the final communique, I will sign. He said, what are these conditions? He said, one, the new partnership republic will be a member of the European Union, not the 1960 republic. Two, Greco-Turkish balance over the island of Cyprus will be maintained. Three, the embargoes on the Turkish Cypriot side will be lifted. If these are to be in the final communique, I will sign the Annan plan. And we all know the result. Um, but his, his response, word by word, is what's important here. Word by word, this is what he said. Look here. The 60 Republic is in. If you sign today, you will go under the same umbrella with them into the European Union. If not, the government of Cyprus will not be as generous to you from now on as they have been up to now. <coughs> In a way, threatening us. And of course, I didn't sign. I was one of those Turkish Cypriots who voted no to the Annan plan. I still maintain today that the Annan plan was a terrible plan. May I get through the final question? Sure. What are your hopes? What do you foresee in the next future? Well, as you know, the two sides are trying to negotiate presently. Uh, the Greek Cypriot side is obviously in no hurry at all. They want to co conduct talks in an open-ended way. Uh, we don't see it that way. We, we have been negotiating for the past 50 years. Um, the main reason why there has not been uh, an agreement is the UN Security Council Resolution of March 1964, Resolution 186, which pretended as if there was still a legitimate republic and its government in place. Agreements are made between equals. If you create a state of affairs where one side to the dispute is a state and the other side to the dispute is simply a so-called community, unequal, then how do you expect a negotiating process to produce an, a, a result based on equality? Um, we have been negotiating for the past 50 years with no success because of this resolution. Because the Greek Cypriots are the state, we are not. Um, we want this time, we want this to be the final attempt at a resolution uh, within a certain timetable. If there is no agreement again, then each side will have the right to go its own way. Uh, our president proposed to the Greek Cypriot president, uh, Anastasiadis, uh, a timetable for the negotiations to come to an end by June and for the two sides to go to a referenda. The Greek Cypriot president refused. So, as I said earlier, they want to maintain open-ended negotiations. We can negotiate for another 50 years. No result. We don't see it that way. So what exactly this timetable will be, whether it will end in uh, June, June or July or August or I in 15? your hopes. My... I hope that the international community will stop treating the Turkish Cypriots 
the way they have treated the Turkish Cypriots uh, up until today. We don't deserve this treatment. We don't deserve to be treated as some kind of international outlaws. We are the victims on the island of Cyprus. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you.